Welcome to Institute of Quality and Reliability. Hi, this is Heyman. Hypothesis Testing Part 1 Introduction and One Sample Z Test Before watching this video, we recommend viewers to watch our videos on Statistical Calculations that is Standard Deviation and Mean Normal Distribution and Z Score and the Central Limit Theorem Links to these videos are provided in the description of the video Managements often talk about database decision making. But how do we take our decisions? Based on our experience? Based on our judgments? Based on our assumptions? To maintain relations? How can statistical methods help us take data-based decisions? Taking decisions based on data and statistical methods is the essence of hypothesis testing. So what kind of decisions we need to make? And these are only some examples. Decide supplier who is better, supplier A or supplier B. Is the proposed process better than the existing process? Is the new design more reliable? Is the new material stronger? Are sales in some regions better than other regions? Are we improving our performance? Are we producing more after recruiting a new officer? Is service time in night shift worse as compared to day shift? Are we getting more passengers after announcing a new scheme? Do we continue with the scheme? Let us consider that head of R&D in an automobile company claims that his team has developed a new model of motorcycle that has better fuel consumption. How do we validate this kind of a claim? We will explain the basic concepts in hypothesis testing with reference to this example. The company data shows that the current motorcycle model sold by the company has mean fuel economy of 70 km per liter of petrol with standard deviation of 3. We can then write mean mu as 70 and standard deviation sigma as 3. Remember mu and sigma are population parameters based on historical data. The data is known to be normally distributed. In hypothesis testing, we make an assumption called hypothesis about a population parameter. Population parameter could be mean mu, standard deviation sigma or even median for population size of n. We collect sample data from sample size n, small n and calculate sample mean x bar and standard deviation s. Using x bar and or s, we calculate some statistic. We use this statistic to decide how likely is our assumption about population parameter correct. So how do we validate this claim? Suppose we take a sample motorcycle from the pilot lot and find the fuel economy as 73 km per liter. Can we now conclude that the new model has better fuel economy? We will not be able to conclude this as this could just be a random difference. So we need to take more samples. Consider now that we check 5 samples instead of 1 and get the data as shown in the table here. In hypothesis tests, 
once we have defined our problem we need to formulate what is called as null hypothesis null hypothesis is the assumption that actually does not require evidence null hypothesis is written as h0 colon null hypothesis is always for population parameter for example h0 colon mu1 is equal to mu2 means null hypothesis assumes that the two data sets have equal population mean another example h0 colon sigma1 is equal to sigma2 denotes that null hypothesis assumes that two data sets have equal population standard deviation after the null hypothesis we also need to define the alternate hypothesis if our data does not support our assumption we must reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis it is denoted as h1 colon examples of alternate hypothesis are h1 mu not equal to mu 0 which is for a one sample test h1 mu 1 not equal to mu 2 is another example but this is for a two sample test h1 sigma not equal to sigma 0 is again for a one sample test of standard deviation and h1 sigma 1 not equal to sigma 2 is for two sample test a criminal trial is an example of hypothesis testing without statistics in a trial a jury must decide between two hypotheses the null hypothesis is h0 colon the defendant is innocent the alternate hypothesis or research hypothesis is h1 the defendant is guilty the jury does not know which hypothesis is actually true they must make a decision on the basis of evidence presented in the court writing null and alternate hypothesis for our example of motorcycle null hypothesis will be no change in mean fuel economy while as the alternate hypothesis will be improvement in fuel economy thus we can write null and alternate hypothesis as h0 mu is equal to 70 which is the historical mean we can also say that this is mu 0 or mu 0 equals 70 and h1 mu greater than 70 why greater than because we want to assess the claim that the new model of motorcycle gives a better fuel economy in hypothesis testing we need to accept certain types of risks or errors so what are these types of error type 1 error occurs when null hypothesis is rejected when it is actually true also called producer's risk probability of type 1 error is called alpha risk and type 2 error what is type 2 error null hypothesis is accepted when it is actually false also called consumer's risk probability of type 2 error is called beta risk incidentally alpha and beta risks are called producers and consumers risk in the context of sampling plans please watch our video of sampling plans for more information about these kind of risks a matrix will further clarify the concepts of alpha and beta risks let us say that the reality could be either h0 is true or h0 is false similarly decision also could be h0 is true or h0 is rejected the first possibility is that when h0 is true and our decision is also h0 is true that is the correct decision and this probability is called confidence level of decision making and a confidence level in the tests of hypothesis 
But when reality is H0 is true, but we reject H0, this is the definition of type 1 error or alpha risk. If the truth is H0 is false and our decision is H0 is true, this is another type of error but this is beta risk. And if H0 is false is the reality and we are rejecting H0, this is again correct decision but the probability of this correct decision is called power of test. So power of test can be 1 minus beta risk while as confidence level is 1 minus alpha risk. If we knew the truth, we would not need hypothesis testing. So now we need to decide which test is appropriate for our problem. Hypothesis test can be classified as parametric and in parametric test we can have variable data and attribute data. We can also have non-parametric tests and again in the non-parametric test you can have tests for variable data and attribute data. Most parametric tests require that the data is normally distributed while as the non-parametric tests do not require that the data is normally distributed. Sometimes these tests are also called distribution free tests. As the data of fuel economy in our example is of variable type and is given as normally distributed, we will choose parametric test. So which parametric test is appropriate? Again, for variable data, we can have one sample test and in one sample test, we can have one sample Z or one sample T. You can also have two sample tests in variable data and you can also have multiple sample tests in variable data. In case of multiple sample test, we will use analysis of variance. If the data is of attribute type, then again we can have one sample that is one proportion or two sample that is two proportion. You can also have multiple sample that is multiple proportions test. In our case, we will use one sample Z because we are expected to use this when population standard deviation sigma is known. And we can therefore use this test in our case as sigma is equal to three is known and specified in the problem. One sample T is to be used when population standard deviation sigma is not known. One sample Z test is used when population is normally distributed and population standard deviation sigma is already known. Z statistic is then calculated as Z cal equal to x bar minus mu zero upon sigma upon square root n. In our example of fuel economy, we can calculate the average KMPL or fuel economy as 73.8. Mu zero is 70, which is the hypothesized mean. That means it's a historical value with which we want to compare the current sample. X bar, sample average 73.8, sigma is the historical standard deviation 3 and sample size n is 5. Thus, Z calculated can be seen as 73.8 minus 70 upon 3 by square root 5 which equals 2.83. This Z calculated must be compared with the critical value of Z. This Z critical depends on the confidence level and number of tails. Confidence level and number of tails. Confidence level is actually a policy value. We will use confidence level of 95% that is 0.95 in terms of probability. Alpha risk or type 1 error will therefore be 5% or 0 0.05. Remember that alpha risk is probability of rejecting null hypothesis when it is actually true. Number of tails. Depending on the objective, number of tails is decided. 
In this case, the null and alternate hypothesis where h0 mu equal to 70 was null and alternate was mu greater than 70. As we are interested in knowing whether the new model has better fuel economy, we are actually interested in the right tail. This is therefore one tail right tail test. Use table of standard normal distribution to determine the value of z critical and compare z calculated with this value. Here is the table of standard normal distribution. In the table, we must locate a value equal to alpha risk of 0 0.05 on the right tail. The closest values are seen in the table as 0 0.0505 and 0 0.0495 highlighted. Corresponding z-score will be 1.645. So z-critical value is 1.645. The table of standard normal distribution can be downloaded from our website www.world-class-quality.com Let us now interpret the analysis and the results. This is a graphical representation of the results that we got. Z calculated is 2.83 and Z critical is 1.645. As this is a right tail test, if Z calculated is to the right of Z critical, we should reject null hypothesis H0 and accept alternate hypothesis H1. As Z calculated 2.83 is to the right of Z critical 1.645, we must reject H0 in this case and conclude that the new motorcycle model has better fuel economy compared to the existing model. This conclusion can be made at 95% confidence level. A question for viewers, what would be our decision if the confidence level is 99% instead of 95%. Send your answers to us on the email. Here is an exercise for practice. Historically, a company has been completing new projects with mean time of 10 weeks and standard deviation of 1.5 weeks. The management has changed organization structure about 6 months back. After introducing the new organization structure, Data of time to complete 10 projects is collected and is shown in the table here. Has the mean time changed after reorganizing? Assume 95% confidence level. To help you in solving this exercise, mu0 is equal to 10, sigma is equal to 1.5, n sample size is equal to 10, null hypothesis h0, mu is equal to 10, Alternate hypothesis H1, mu not equal to 10. So this is a two tail test with alpha 0, 05 distributed on both the tails. We will discuss more hypothesis tests in our series of videos on hypothesis tests. These will include one sample T test, two sample T test, paired T test, F test, chi square test, and analysis of variance or ANOVA. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it worth watching. Please subscribe to Institute of Quality and Reliability channel if you want to watch more videos on reliability engineering, Six Sigma and statistical quality control. Click on the subscribe and bell icon to get notified for future videos.